everyone and thank you for tuning in. We are here for October's first edition of the Hump Day Hiatus. And this month we are going to be chatting a little bit about the um, core element in a body trust practice that uh, talks, us, talks about um, reconnecting with our body's needs and boundaries. And so we have Amanda Holler here today with us. And uh, I am blessed to have her here in my local community of um, Waterloo, Ontario. And um, we connected like maybe a year and a half, two years ago? I think so. Two years ago, yeah. Um, I had just kind of started into this work that uh, Amanda's been doing for quite a while and started looking for folks in my community that I could reach out to um, and connect with for uh, some support and solidarity. <laughs> yeah, so Amanda is um, a registered social worker and she is a certified intuitive eating counselor through um, Evelyn Triboli. And um, we are here today to chat about some of Amanda's favorite topics. She loves uh, chatting about rejecting the diet mentality and kind of pushing back against diet culture and uh, really kind of you know, exploring this work with folks to see how they can heal the relationship with food and their body to really kind of step into their fullest life and um, find pleasure in food and um, all things body again. So welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm so, so glad that you're here with us. Uh, so let's just dive in by um, having you share a little bit about yourself and how you um, came to this work and uh, what uh, what makes you passionate about it. Sounds great. Well, like uh, many folks, I, you know, I'm very... Uh, very aware of my body, um, kind of from a negative start, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, early trauma, diet culture, kind of that fat phobia, stigma stuff that many of us have experienced at a larger body. And that led to, you know, the dieting in elementary school, eventual eating disorder in high school. But I was so fortunate that my family was aware and, and on point uh, that they got me the help I needed um, when I needed it um, quite quickly. So the major kind of eating disorder behaviors had stopped, which was great. But the diet beliefs and mentality were so pervasive for right. so that it lasted for a long time beyond um, those like major symptoms well into my 20s. Uh, I ended up taking a course online uh, many years ago before anything like this had even existed mm -hmm. uh, about, uh, it was called Fierce Love for Everybody. And it was all about your body, learning about gratitude um, and, and kind of feeling um, and, and processing things that I'd never really considered or thought about before. And that really planted a seed for me that things can be different about my body uh, moving forward. And so I put tremendous, tremendous amount of work uh, into doing, committing to that program. Um, and then I ended up kind of seeking out community. And I said, where are people that are also doing this work, uh, maybe who have done some of this work already that I can look to for some support and guidance. Uh, and it was really hard to find. And this was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't the same kind of as it is now. Um, you know, there's lots of work still yet to do. But you know, if we could Google search or social media hit, we can find hopefully somebody, um, you know, that's doing this work and I can name quite a few. Yeah. So I ended up um, kind of stopped weighing myself. I, I was going to the gym, but I stopped tracking calories and, and what I was doing and I reconnected to how things felt. And then I came across the intuitive wow. eating, like, bam, my, my whole experience and everything I knew and had kind of been processing alone for a long time was written down in a book with a language that I could understand. Right. Um, they spoke to me and I thought, holy jeebus, like here it is. This is what, this is what I've been talking about. This is what I've been trying to do. 
And so, you know, going through that process and, and kind of doing my own healing work, I learned of the intuitive eating uh, course where you could become a counselor. And I thought, this is perfect. That's this where we met. That's where we met. <laughs> <laughs> we had to go online all the way to California to find each other in Waterloo. <laughs> I'm talking about is that all of a sudden it was like oh my goodness there are other people out there even in my community that I could connect to so I, I you know, finished the course um, I thought there have got to be other people who want to heal and uh, and need this healing and I would have given almost anything to have a counselor to provide that support to me when I was going through it yeah and, but this is what kind of my calling is it, it's what fuels my soul um, and the more I talked to other people and, and heard the shame and the pain in their relationships with food in their body, the more I thought I've got to take a leap here and, uh, and start a practice and start offering the service and to say, there are people out there who get it, who understand. Yeah. And who help. Um, so I'm really, really, really passionate. I, I love it uh, when people come and, and talk about, um, you know, their, their desire to, to reject and their um, you know, when they say, I love food, and I say, of course you love food. You're supposed to love food. It's a wonderful, pleasurable thing. 100%. How do we come back to that? How do we reconnect? And how do we um, live and, and live a savored life? Yeah. Uh, you know, what's brought me to this place, and it keeps me really excited and uh, motivated and inspired that things can change. Because when you get to the other side, you think, yeah. Oh my goodness, this like liberation, <laughs> this yeah. metaphorical, pardon the pun, the weight of, yeah. of expectation um, is lifted. Yeah. Oh, I can finally, I can breathe in my body and I can breathe into my life. And it's, it's just, I can't, it's so visceral. I can just feel it in my bones. Yeah. That's why I just, yeah. I have to be involved somehow, get me involved. Yeah. I sometimes have a hard time articulating things because for me, a lot of what I experience is a felt sense, right? So that idea of feeling it in your bones, of feeling that liberation, of feeling that, you know, that weight lift off that we've been carrying, you know, of all of these ways that we've been told we're supposed to show up in our bodies, these ways that we've been taught and told that, you know, we're supposed to conduct ourselves and behave and look and even even the way we're, we're told that, you know, how we're supposed to feel about things. Absolutely. Right. And and so we end up, you know, carrying and we wearing all of these different pieces of armor, these personas and other people's ideas and beliefs about who we should be. And this, you know, rejecting diet culture is really about rejecting all of that, which we're told we're supposed to be so that we can get to the place inside of us where we actually are. Absolutely. That authenticity is yeah. beautiful, beautiful thing. And I think we are, we struggle so much to get to that place. Um, Brené Brown says, you know, we hustle mm -hmm. for, you know, for worthiness. And that's the most common thing that, you know, I, my clients come to me is I'm, I'm not worthy as I am right now. Yeah. And messaging that they've received over and over again, whether it was from family or friends or the, you know, our diet culture and community that's prescribing these expectations. And we say, but you are, yeah. you are so worthy. You are always, you've always been worthy and you will always be worthy for who you are. And, you know, to help people try and come, come to a place where they can learn to accept that and, and start to embrace that. You can see the shift, um, but it's such hard work to do when we're told you have to hustle and you have to be perfect and you have to meet all these expectations and you have to perform and do all of these things that don't necessarily meet your values. Yeah. Um, what is important to you and so it never nothing ever really fits and it doesn't feel right um, until you're able to get to that place where you can say I know I know who I am and I know I know myself enough that I can I can you know set boundaries and I can I can have expectations and I can for myself that yeah use in my core and live a different live a different way
Yeah, and it really, you know, this this idea of, um, you know, of of living from our core and in authenticity with who we are, I find, you know, there's there's a there's a there's so many different ways that we can can kind of open the door into exploring those spaces and possibilities. And I really, I feel like so much of it for me, and I'm not sure if you share this as well or your, your clients, but so much of it starts with unlearning. Mm -hmm. Like before I could even get to a place of saying, okay, I think I know what my needs are, what my boundaries are, what I like and dislike. I had to go through a process of kind of shedding all of this stuff that was projected onto me and really examining things that I believed about the world in order to get to this place of being able to discover what it was that I in fact needed because there were so many voices out there and so many layers of things that were dictating what I needed, right? I had to kind of unlearn and unpack those pieces first before I could, you know, dive in and actually sense what my own personal needs were from the inside, right? Oh, we are bombarded with messaging and, ex and, um, Expect I'm gonna say it again, like these expectations, like the like, like the layers of of how we are to live our lives and what the social norms are. And to push back against those social norms means you have to be very vulnerable. And that can be really scary. Um, but it opens the doors to kind of experience and wonder and be curious about what do they mean? Do am I do I believe in them? You know, can I challenge them? Um how do I, how do I start to navigate through all the, the noise and kind of <laughs> mess of expectation and, and, um, and rules and, and prescriptions and, um, and whatnot and start to, to hear, to hear myself kind of within all of that and to say, what is, what, am, what actually speaks to me, <laughs> what kind of fuels me, um, what gives me a little bit of spark and passion and, and fire and a little bit that feels right. That feels kind of at home. Yeah. Um, that takes, you know, it takes tremendous awareness and curiosity and compassion um, to be able to, to get to a place to start to question those things because they're complex. You know, we talk about the patriarchy and then the patriarchal system. Um, it's huge. You know, it, it, infil it infiltrates so many aspects and areas of our lives and most of us are unaware and still yeah. learn um, as to what that means. Um, you know, all the stuff in the news lately, it, it stirred up so much for people about their bodies and about, um, you know, how, you know, women um, are portrayed in the world and understood, at least in our world, um, yeah. in the Western world, um, and where we fit and where we're supposed to fit and how we're supposed to be, act and be and live. And so it's, uh, it's brought up a lot, I think, for a lot of people and a mm -hmm. lot of questioning um, you know, how do we, how do we protect ourselves and how do we stay safe in our bodies, um, you know, to protect our mental health and still find our community to keep connected with everybody else. So it's, yeah. there's a lot that's going on and it's, it's really complex stuff. I, I, these, are, these are Kavanaugh bags. <laughs> <laughs> I have some of those. <laughs> oh my God. I like, I Oh God, every day, every day, like last week, I was, I just was like, why am I so exhausted? Why am I waking up so exhausted? Oh, well, it's because, you know, I, I, I find myself really, when you talk about the patriarchy, you know, I find myself just observing and witnessing all the ways in which so many of us are taught it's almost like it's a requirement of being in society and being welcomed you know how much we're expected to betray our own bodies how much we're expected to ignore our own knowing 
um, for the sake of of maintaining the status quo and not rocking the boat, keeping others comfortable. Um, and, you know, we're really seeing what, you know, the consequences of what happens when we dare say no, mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. enough, enough is enough. And, you know, it's really, really highlighting right now how much the patriarchy values power and values its privilege mm -hmm. over the truth of our bodies and the truth of, well, what we know to be true, right, in our experience. And um, yeah, it's been really, really tough. I was just reading an article um, last night uh, and it was talking about yin and yang. And it had said, um, you know, yin is the, there's yin, which was the, the mother, the, if you think about it, like mama bear who wants to, uh, wants to protect and nurture and love, you know, their, their cubs. And then there's yang, which is like mama bear, the ferocious bear who is going to protect her cubs and she is going to come out and she is going to not be quiet or silent but she is going to fight um for with compassion and and a fierceness that we're not taught to to allow to be to show yeah and so I found that I I only got it was like 11 o'clock <laughs> I was half and I was half dead <laughs> You're like, baby's asleep. I think it's time for me to be asleep. <laughs> I'm reading this, I should be sleeping. But it spoke to me. And I thought, yes, we're, we're, there's this been the slow kind of creeping in of this ferocious womanhood that is saying enough is enough. And we need to speak out and, you know, with the Me Too movement and things that are happening, um, kind of coming together and saying collectively, you know, we need to be kind of mama bears you know, the ferociousness together because individually it's very isolating and very lonely and yeah. we get lost. And that's, um, it's so, you, well, you see what happens. Yeah. You're believed and you're pushed aside and, and whatnot. So it's, uh, just kind yeah. of, go, okay, let's, uh, let's kind of rise up. <laughs> Yeah. And there's definitely, you know, in this digital day and age that we're in, I mean, you know, thankfully there is technology like this where, you know, we can connect with folks from all over the place um, and have these conversations. Folks from all over the place can join in and listen. Um, and at the same time, you know, the shadow side to it is that we've started to think that we don't need people in 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 like the most human of ways right like in person connection and touch and you know that the exchange that happens when you just stand side by side someone and i really feel that you know and you you and i know and every everyone that i've spoken with on the hiatus so far has mentioned community and just how crucial and important it is to, um, you know, be surrounded by folks who see you, who get you, who trust you, um, who believe in you, who see your worth and value, not because of what you do, but just because you're here, right? Yes. Because of your being. And I think, you know, this connection and way of showing up in community and being with one another, which is rooted in compassion and love and kindness, right? As, as ferocious as we get and as is needed for us to get in order to, 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 you know, go through and come out the other side of this. Um, as you said, there's also that component to it, which, has us showing up together in ways that is completely different from how the systems that we're up against right now would have us show up. Mm. Right. And to me, that community is a defiance, right. That is a resistance that is a rising up. It's saying, you know, here's how, here's how we choose to be. 
Absolutely. And we are allowed to be this way. And we're going we're gonna to let you know that. <laughs> we're here. Absolutely. And we're fed up. <laughs> yeah. And people boundaries, have boundaries have been violated. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, centuries. Absolutely. This this isn't new, right? This is this is just it is continued, and we continue to. I don't know if improves the quite the right word, but we can we continue to work towards um, in different ways um, and using different mediums to say, okay, we are collectively, you know, our, the benefit of community and, and the benefit of technologies, we we are able to bring together yeah. to connect. So, you know, the world has gotten smaller, and that's a, a huge benefit to us to say, you are not alone. Mm -hmm. Us. we're here we might not be you know to connect in person but we're here and we believe you and we trust yeah. you. absolutely and and even just you know thinking about um thinking about boundaries and how and how they're viewed um when you know certain identities or certain genders um, and gender identities enforce them, right? Like how, how boundaries are viewed when someone who is socialized and identifies as a male, um, you know, kind of holds them and puts them in place versus what it looks like for say someone who identifies as a woman or someone who is non-binary, um, you know, what, what stories were told about those people when they instill boundaries and stand up. And um, I think, you know, it's really important to see how much that's highlighting the inequality of things right now. Just how, yeah, the stories that are told about folks who say no, mm -hmm. right? And how that changes based on how they show up in the world, how they appear in the world. Um, and I, I remember a while ago learning, um, I think it was through my body trust training that, um, you know, boundaries are, are a way of helping people know how to interact with us, how to communicate with us, right? It's their, their guidelines and they in fact can make connection and communication much easier absolutely there's um in the intuitive eating book they talk about there's a number of uh, it's kind of like an exercise where there are a number of voices there's um the uh food police nutrition informant um the diet rebel and then they switch over to um new kind of nutrition ally um diet ally instead of diet rebel and whatnot and one of the things I really um, love when kind of experience, when talking about diet culture um, and boundaries is when our autonomy is challenged and people, you know, are, are saying you should, you should, you should, um, you know, whether it's specific to diet culture, but as, uh, as well as in gender norms and expectations and, and, and whatnot, um, we rebel, you know, our, our inner rebel, you know, our inner kind of boundaries rebels. Um, and you can't get that kind of forget you attitude and a response and saying, you violated my boundaries and you violated something that's important to me and that I, um, I'm not going to put up with. So I'm going to say, forget you. The challenge is that sometimes that can get you so far in that forget you response, but it can become self-sabotaging if it goes too far and it goes, forget you, I'm going to do it anyway. So for example, um, with regards to eating, um, should you have the cake? Uh, don't you dare tell me what I can and cannot have. Forget you. I'm going to do it anyway, regardless of how I feel, regardless of how, you know, my physically feel, mentally feel, I do it anyway. That might not be in your best interest if you don't, if it doesn't serve you, if it doesn't yeah. actually meet the needs that you have. So the diet uh, ally, which is the opposite of the diet rebel, is the one that says, you know, when someone makes a comment, should you really have that? Uh, that's where the ally comes in and says, you know, no, thank you. I'm all right. Um, I'm not hungry. Another time. Uh, maybe I'll take some with me. Setting up the boundaries to say, I'm not going to actually let you have impact on me. And I'm going to, you know, 
uh, understand that you've kind of attacked my autonomy by saying, yeah, but I'm going to respond back to you and say, well, listen, <laughs> this, From is a place of autonomy. this is where I actually draw my line and, uh, you know, I'm not okay with that. And here's my way of setting boundaries and saying, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like what you're saying is that, um, a lot of our boundaries, you know, can come from a place of um, self-compassion is kind of what I heard in that. And that, um, you know, it takes, um, it takes embodiment in order to connect with that place of where those kind of, um, come from absolutely and embodiment in that you know we have to, in order to to set up good boundaries for ourselves in, in all areas of our life um, and specifically when i work with clients around the intuitive eating stuff is basic needs you know we can't be within and, and of ourselves if we aren't taking care of ourselves yeah you know sleep fuel rest play sex drinking water you know basic things that that keep us functioning and well um, in order to, to set up and to reinforce boundaries and to be able to listen and hear, you know, if we're, if our autonomy and things, our values are being challenged where we can respond and say, you know what, no, I'm not okay with this. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't come, that doesn't come easy if it's, uh, if it's not practiced and, or, mm -hmm. um, and it takes tremendous self-compassion, um, to, to practice and learn and unlearn, like you said, you know, yeah we've been taught and uh, to be compliant and to just kind of go with the flow and, Oh, it's not a big deal. And to be able to kind of stop and pause and say, hold on, <laughs> this yeah. resonate with me. I, I need to, this doesn't work for me <laughs> and I need to be able to say something um, easier said than done, uh, yeah. but possible. Yeah. And another layer to that as well, I find often, um, is that, you know, in order to, in order to uphold our boundaries and let, let others know what our needs are, um, there's this piece of, um, you know, worthiness that almost, um, I found, you know, needed to be present within me, like the sense of I am deserving of these things um, needed to be there before I could feel that I had a right mm. to speak, before I could feel that um, I had a right to have boundaries, right, to have my needs fulfilled. There was this whole other piece. It's like, okay, so I'm learning what these things are for me. And at the same time, I don't necessarily feel deserving of them, right? So there's so many layers to this work. And again, you know, this idea of being undeserving or unworthy, and like you mentioned, hustling, right, from Brene Brown's work is again, all put out there by these patriarchal systems, these capitalistic systems that are designed that really would fall apart if we liked ourselves, right? If we, if we valued ourselves and found we were worthy as we are, these, these things would fall apart. Mm -hmm. Industries would completely fall apart because they do not make money off of us looking in the mirror and going, yeah. <laughs> I doing that, you know, every day, <laughs> you look in the mirror and you, you know, it's something I started years ago. I look in the mirror and I'm like, yeah, Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big smile. I'm like, yeah, you're, you're worth it. You know, totally. you are totally worth it. Um, and you're right. It, it, it has to come Then that work, uh, is it's tremendous work. It's tremendous work. If you, you know, I have clients who, uh, they've, the, the idea that they are worth worthy of just being without trying to manipulate their body um, without trying to 
you know, to be dressed to the nines with, you know, the makeup and the hair and, you know, the clothes and just the whole kind of package that were sold, you know, um, the concept of, of that they are worthy enough has never crossed their mind. Um, I had someone recently say, she goes, no, I said, I asked her, I said, has anyone ever actually said that you are enough as you are right now? And she said, no, she had never, she had never been told that. Um, and that for her was huge. And I said, yeah. you know, you are enough as you are right now, this moment in this room, as we sit here together, that nothing needs to change about you. You are a, you know, a beautiful human being just as you are. And she, she'd come back a couple weeks later and she said, you know what? I, no one had ever said that. And no one, I never really considered that that was true for me. And it, it just, it broke my heart. And I said, you know, how, how many people are living alive and not knowing that as a human being, as a person in this world who has thoughts and feelings and, you know, opinions and wonderings and curiosities and, and contributes or doesn't contribute or whatever, just for a being doesn't know that. And I thought, oh, it just, it's why, it's why I do the work that I do as I, I want help people to get to that place to say you are and you are a beautiful soul just as you are yeah and I think about you know how much suffering and loneliness most of us experience because of this this disconnection from ourselves from this idea that we can't be ourselves. We have to be someone else in order to be worthy. And, you know, as you said, it's, it's heartbreaking. And I see um, one of my favorite videos and I watch it. I don't even know how many times a week I watch it. Um, it's um, the behind the scenes taping of um, the theme song from The Greatest Showman. I love that. I love it. I watch it so many times too. And the other day I was, I was, I woke up early. I was watching it and, and my boyfriend got up and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, just making myself cry. <laughs> and I watch, there's one part that I watch over and over and over again, because it just is like the moment where you can sense that, in her bones, like Kyle, she's like, no, like I, I am enough. This yeah. is me. like, you can see the moment where she just like steps into her body and steps forward and is like, this is my space. This yeah. is my time. Like, this is mine. And I just, you know, I have such a difficult time. Liberation is the only word that comes to mind, you know, when I think about that moment and I'm just like, that is the moment that I want everyone to realize, you know, that moment of being in your body, being alive, being unapologetic and knowing that as you are and as you show up, you are enough. Absolutely. There's the line, there's a line that song that um, was kind of a, a mantra of mine for a while. It was, I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies. And I just, I ran with that for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I, every, you know, being a new mom and um, the first time mom and, and, you know, bodies have shifted and changed and you know, my whole world has changed. Yeah. Right. Um, and going out into the world and saying, you know, like, I'm not scared. I'm, I choose, I'm, I'm working really hard to not be scared of, of the changes and what has happened and who, who I am as I navigate, you know, a new identity. And, um, yeah, I, I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies for, for all the things I'm, you know, working through and, and trying to understand and just letting the process happen. That's, that's okay. Um, and I make no apologies for that. That is, that is my process and has nothing to do with anybody else. Totally. And, it just and I think, you know, the more we can um, 
step out of, you know, those expectations that are put out there and we can really start to um, connect in, you know, with our autonomy was the word that you used and, and connect into who we are underneath all of these, you know, misplaced layers and, and expectations, you know, the closer we get to, yeah, stepping into, into that space. Sometimes, you know, I, in jest, I kind of use the, the phrase, you know, fake it till you make it, <laughs> um, you know, and I've I had mixed feelings about it, but for the most part, you know, I, you know, there are things that, and things that I've had to say in practice say, right. to buy in and to say, okay, no, like I, I believe this <laughs> and I have to remind myself, you know, that I believe this and that this is, um, this is important to me and this is a value and, and, you know, whether it's a, on shaky ground <laughs> sometimes, um, yeah. trying to figure it out and to, to show real conviction um, I've always liked, uh, you know, you're allowed to take up space in the world. Absolutely. I don't know where I first came across that. It's, you know, I've seen it lots since. Yeah. But man, does that, your, my personality can take up space. My body can take up space. My ideas can take up space. My heart can take up space. Um, that, that's okay. And that, that was really freeing as well as to say, I, I'm allowed to, um, and you know, kind of screw anybody who says I can't. Yeah, Yeah, totally. But to get to that place and to say, okay, I have enough kind of, I am enough to be able to, to hold on to that and to, to practice it and to um, promote it. (laughs) A piece that I love, um, from, um, body trust that kind of works in that arena is an exercise where you write permission slips to yourself. Mm. Right. And so I, I'm for me, affirmations and the fake it till you make it feels sometimes a little too bizarre and not in alignment with where I'm at in my body at the moment. And so I, I found it, quite helpful to write myself permission slips like you know it's it's okay to feel this way you know I give you permission to um you know what whatever it is that you're working towards and maybe um feeling like you're fumbling um not totally sure but you know like I give you permission to take up space in this world absolutely even though you may not feel worthy of that you have permission to do so Absolutely love that. Yeah, and I I found it was a really helpful stepping stone for me um, to get to, yeah, to that place. There is, you know, nothing's black or white. We know that, right? So all that gray space can be really uncomfortable and really vulnerable. And to be able to say, it's okay. This space is okay. We're allowed to be in this space um, and to fumble and to question and to wonder and to be curious. And to say, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. And once you get, once you kind of push through the initial super awkwardness of being in that place, I like living in it is, takes so much less energy. Absolutely. It just right? Like, being able to go, I don't know. Instead of feeling like you need to have an answer, you need to know, you know, I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. And that's okay. <laughs> I, and I might not know for a really long time and that's okay. I may never know. Yeah. I don't know. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and, and also, you know, at the same time, I find it's, I'm often, I'm, I'm, I'm a Gemini. So I like, I like committing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> regardless, I'm like, no, I'm in, um, you know, so I've had to learn that even though I can feel that, you know, 10 minutes later, I can feel something different and that's okay. Uh, you know, it's okay to go, Oh shit. I just learned something new. And now that thing that I did five minutes ago, Ooh, whoops. <laughs> yep. right? <It's- laughs> but that's, that's, 
that's the beauty of being human. And if we can, if we can accept that and we can live in that space, and if more people can join us in that kind of authentic kind of, you know, just kind of meandering and, and learning and, you know, kind of backtracking and moving forward and just that compassionate space yeah. of what we can do for each other and for ourselves and for, you know, for everybody else. <laughs> I won't say kind of the world, but, you know. Yeah. And that's really, you know, ultimately, like, if you look at the roots of body positivity, right, it's, it's about, it's about the liberation of, of marginalized bodies, the liberation of fat bodies, right? And to me, you know, always coming back to the roots of that is so important to remember that this is about community. This is about the world, you know, yes, we are in process of healing our own shit. And, you know, that's so necessary when you're wanting to open yourself up in the world um you know and and I just yeah I just for me I just keep remembering like this is this is about healing this is about generational healing this is about you know healing all over the world it's a new paradigm it's a new way of of living and relating of being with ourselves and being with others so it's it's bigger than the individual, right? Like yeah. we are acting, we do our own healing so that we can bring that healing to, to help others in their journey as well and lift us all up um, and lift, especially the most marginalized and to say, we are, we are in this and, you know, we need to do, I can't help others if I can't help myself. Yeah. Um, you know, you, this month is all about boundaries and setting your own boundaries and saying, I have to take care of myself. Um, you know, you can't pour from an empty cup, as they say. It's yes. so and it is hard. It is so hard, especially as a new mom. It is so hard, but there's so much value in doing it. And the the rewards you reap from taking care of yourself are tenfold. Yeah. So, you know, to remember that and to say, okay, I'm not only doing this for me, but I'm doing this for everyone around me who I love and care about and can professionally personally you know everybody in my sphere I do this so I can help and care and and show compassion for everyone else yeah so that's uh that keeps me going absolutely is there anything else that you'd like to share with us before we sign off for the day I don't think so my goodness <laughs> this- I know the 45 minutes goes by like in the blink of an eye it does and you know what this is, I just want to say, this is really complex stuff. You know, this is, it's, it's really invigorating and tough and, and heartbreaking and loving and wonderful and scary and vulnerable and courageous and brave. And it, it's, it's big, it's big. And there is support and there is community out there for people who are looking to be part of that wherever they are in their journey. Yeah. And, and so how can folks find you personally? So uh, saberlifetherapy.ca online. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter, all that social media stuff, and Facebook. Um, and I have news. I'm just working towards launching online work so I can hopefully reach a broader um, variety of folks. So Yay! Just- our process so it's a little overwhelming but I'm excited that hope to reach more people in Ontario perfect that's wonderful well thank you so much for joining us today and if you just want to stay on the line I'm going to say a quick goodbye to everyone out there and then uh, we can chat uh so thanks so much for joining us everyone we will um not be here with a guest next week, but will the following week. I have uh, Nicole Eikenberry, who is in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. She's going to be joining us. Um, and then on the, that's the 17th. And then on the 24th, I have Sarah Thompson, who's in Portland, Oregon. And um, is um, her business is, is um, Resilient Fat Goddess, which I absolutely 
love and adore. Um, and uh, so, yes, please stay tuned. Uh, I'll be here for a little bit next week just um, chatting with you. And then, um, yeah, we'll carry on with our guests talking about our um, boundaries and needs and reconnecting with those in a body trust practice. So once again, thanks, Amanda, for joining us. And um, you can check out the replay on my Facebook page, Reclaiming the Wilds, also on my YouTube channel, Reclaiming the Wild. And for those of you who haven't signed up for my mailing list, please do so and you'll get your free five-step guides to shedding some body shame. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Bye.